Oh, good evening all. Welcome to my live stream. My webcam appears to have gone somewhere. There we are. Uh, welcome to my weekly live stream, doing some Node Red core development um, here every Monday evening, 8 p.m. UK time, um, for about an hour or so, um, sometimes longer, often longer, sometimes shorter. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so it's an hour or so of core development on the Node Red project. Um, generally, whatever I happen to be working on or interesting things that I think are useful to cover in videos shared with the community. Um, as I always say, if there are particular areas, particular topics, particular bugs, particular features you'd be interested in seeing me working on in these streams, then do let me know. Either leave a comment on the YouTube videos or drop a message in the chat or ping me on Slack, however you want. Um, always open to suggestions for things to cover. So yeah, what are we going to look at tonight? Well, we are, for those who follow the project, we've got Node Red 2.1 is due to release any moment. Um, so that's, yeah, 2.1 is, we've got the beta, second beta went out last Thursday. The plan is to do 2.1 final on Thursday this week. So we're very much in these sort of those last stages of a release, waiting to see what issues the beta flags up. Um, you know, in terms of raw functionality, everything is in the beta that we plan to be in the beta. So um, it's not like we've got a bunch of development work just sat waiting to go. So yeah, that's where we're at. I'm just having a look at the NPM stats. So we published beta 2 last week. We've had 90 installs of it since it was published on Thursday, which isn't huge, but you know, better than nothing we've had. It does mean some of you are trying it out. Um, yeah, you know, I, I would feel more comfortable if we had had a few more installs of it before we do the final release, because mm -hmm. inevitably there, there are always edge conditions in there that, you know, for, for all the testing that does go on, um, with something like Node Red, there's a thousand and one other ways that people use it to do interesting things. So, um, yeah, we, we'll see. So, um, hi everyone in the chat. New Street New, welcome. You, oh, well, you're very welcome. I'm, I'm glad you enjoy Node Red. So you'd be interested in the stream reviewing the updates in the latest release that's been done. So, um, yeah, well, we're going to, the, the proper release of 2.1 will happen, all being well, later this week. And we always do have a, um, we do or, always do a release video, which a sort of a video version of the release notes. It doesn't go into huge detail. We try and keep it shorter. Yeah, it, it's a video version of the release notes rather than an in-depth demo. But um, yeah, maybe that's something to look at uh, on next Monday's stream. Although next Monday's stream might not happen. Watch this space. It's, it is a school holiday time next week. And although we're not going away, I might just be busy with other life stuff but we'll see we'll see watch this space so if you if you log on to twitch 8 p.m next week and i don't appear i will try and say i will set the twitch schedule to say if i'm going to be streaming or not so my um yeah watch this space i i'm, I'm guessing i will be streaming but there is a chance i won't be so yeah we could um uh do a bit more in depth on some of the new features in that stream um, so yeah, so some good questions cropping up. Hi everyone. Um, so do we have partners for testing like the Hitachi guys? Absolutely. Um, the Hitachi guys do a great job of, um, testing the work. In fact, uh, Nishiyama-san raised some really useful issues against the link nodes, which at the end of last week, which have all been resolved, which is great. Um, they're also really good at staying on top of getting the Japanese translations updated. Now there's a slight snag this go round, um, just some uh, process stuff around con contributing to the project. Um, they aren't, we aren't currently able to merge changes from Hitachi until they get some paperwork sorted, which is 
um, uh, unfortunate. So it means we can't actually merge their translation updates in, two, in time for 2.1. But um, hopefully that will get resolved by the end of this month and we will do a 2.1. whatever maintenance release um, as soon as um, we're in a position to merge their translation changes. So yeah, I mean, the touch guys do do a great job for us um, for the whole project, and and they're also working on some interesting features that uh, again you know, didn't make the cut for two point one, but um, hopefully two point two in January we'll we'll have some of that. But let's not worry about two point two now. Uh, another question, sorry, is there already a way to create custom lint rules? Did not find documentation about it. Um, yeah, so lint rules are pluggable. And you're right, it's not really documented. <laughs> so um, that was actually something I was going to... Um, I've, I've not spent any time on the Lint tool recently. So once we get the 2.1 release, then the Lint tool almost like... it's It shuffles back up the stack, it and the flow debugger. And I can spare some cycles to it in absence of other people... Um, you know, other people contributing specifically to it. So, yeah, we should look at the overall consumability and how we can improve the Lint tool. Um, you know, we've not had a huge amount of feedback from the community on it. You know, lots of enthusiasm for it, but again, it's it's hard to judge how much how much it's getting used, how much um, activity it's really getting. Um, and again, I think in part the challenge is if, if because it's not part of the default install for kind of good reason, then new users coming to Node Red don't really have any reason to know it exists. So both it and the Flow Debugger and some of the other tools we provide around the outside of the project, I think we need they they deserve better from us in terms of um, documentation, in terms of overall consumability, how the community find them, how they know they exist, how they can start using them, all that sort of stuff, I think, is um, something that, as a project, we need to look at. And again, it always comes down to the challenge of so much of this then ends up on my plate to do this work, and it takes time for me to work through it, as well as my um, wearing my other hat with my startup, trying to build bigger things around no dread um you know it's it is a challenge to share you know split that time so i'm always looking for better ways to help encourage more people in the community to contribute and find ways that they can get involved so um so yeah um and that's a good point you know, in chat ties twitch saying curious how confident you can be how you can feel about the beta testing i mean it, it is always a challenge I mean, we didn't used to do the beta releases we used to rely entirely on our own manual testing and, and the unit testing we have. But um, no, I think we, we've adopted the beta testing um, way of doing things just because it it um, we just know that there are, like I said, more people using it in new and interesting ways out there than, than we can cover manually. So, you know, any any feedback we get especially yeah there might be subtle edge cases buried in that to us what the beta is good for is just catching the glaring obvious catch the things that um uh, are really quick and easy to find and have somehow slipped through the testing we've done i like the, the current beta there's one of the the there's some functionality in the link nodes which is just broken and you know there's that was um, uh, well entirely un regrettable, um, but we know we don't have unit tests in this particular area, and the manual test we did just didn't quite hit what is an obvious scenario, but it just didn't didn't get triggered. Um, and also things like browser, um, you know, different browsers, different OSs. I think there's actually something we can just tidy up tonight. I think there's a bug with um, maybe a, a, d a display issue on Safari, I think, which um, I, I don't tend to use on my Mac. But, um, you know, it's there to be seen as soon as you open the edit dialog in Safari. But 
if you think you know, we've got, I don't know, is it 30 nodes in the core palette? Um, and there's just so much to, if you were to systematically test everything on every browser, it would take days and days and days when it's just one or two of you doing that work. So, so yeah, no, the beta is goodness. Um, I'm always keen to try and encourage more people to try out the beta. And when I say we've had 90 NPM installs of the beta, that doesn't take into account the Docker images. So um, it's hard to get fine grained stats on, on the Docker images, but you know, that's another vector that people could be trying this stuff out with. So anyway, that's enough for, um, it is certainly time to go and fix some stuff and go and tidy up a couple bits for the final release. So let's crack on, um, let's crack on. Let me go and find the right window so I can show you my screen. There you are. So now, and I've read, yeah, I read in my OBS setup, whilst I'm talking and relate, talking to you guys in the chat, in this view, you don't see the chat. Maybe I should fix that, but there you go. There's the chat that's been going on. Um, yeah, so, um, well, okay, I will, when you talk about visual node testing, one of the bits of work the Hitachi guys have contributed is, um, uh, UI testing capability for the editor. Um, so we are able to run regression tests of the of the editor, or at least, <laughs> yeah. So they did the work to get a framework in place. And is it Browser Stack? I think it does use. Um, so that does exist, but we just don't have test cover. You know, we don't have all the test cases. Um, you know, it, it does some very rudimentary things, but again, that's half the challenge. It's, you know, building the framework's half the problem. The, the second half is then writing all the tests that use that framework. Um, and yeah, we just haven't, um, haven't had the investment to try and drive that. So, right. What are we going to do tonight? Tonight we are going to, um, there's a cosmetic thing in the welcome tour. So let me let me explain what I mean. Um, so here we are, I'm in the, hmm, let me just move that window. That's just Mosquito because I was doing some MQT testing. Um, let me skip that off in the background. Um, so yeah, so here I am, I'm in the dev branch, which is what the beta code is in. Um, we're all up to date. I'm just going to create a new branch for this work, which is the, call it the tour guide fix. And we run grunt dev, which is the dev task, which builds the editor, uh, builds all the code, runs it, watches for changes, restarts, reloads as needed. Um, so, uh, hey, Sean. So, would it make sense, you say in the chat? Would it make sense to have a group of people from the community to test certain areas during the beta? Yeah, I, I think having finding the right way to coordinate people and and part of the problem is has been in the past the slightly unpredictable schedule, um, and that's certainly something I'm looking at and trying to resolve. Which is, well, you may have noticed, you may not have noticed, the first beta was released on a third. Yeah, on a Thursday, beta two was on a Thursday, and the final release is going to be on a Thursday. So, what I want to try and get to is sort of a more predictable schedule. When we say, you know, we target a release date for the final release, and then we work back a number of weeks, depending on relative risk, relative level of change in the release, um, we can then. Um, um, then say you know be well known that we will release the beta on a given Thursday and we will refresh it on subsequent Thursdays maybe not one a week you know might skip a week but but again just trying to be predictable so that if there are people who um, want to try out the beta or want to try and test it then 
it's not a surprise and they suddenly have to change their plans or they have to try and squeeze in. If it's well known in advance, then yeah, people in the community can try and help. Right, anyway, let's... Um, uh, ooh, and someone's just reported... Sorry, I got distracted because someone at this second has just reported a bug on the beta, which looks wrong, so... Okay, I'm going to crack on and try and whistle through some issues now. So first up, it's the tour guide. So the tour guide um, is the new feature that welcomes you when you first run the editor. Um, it looks like this. Welcome to Node Red. And you can, and it walks you through pointing at different bits of the UI as it goes. That's all well and good. Um, now, it's been pointed out, if you have the palette hidden like that, and you run the tour guide, and we just flick through these ones, these ones, tab menu, that. So this is all good, everything's working there. So on step 10, it wants to link point to the link nodes in the palette to highlight the new link call node. But if the palette's hidden, it goes wrong. So we are going to fix that. That's what we're going to do. Um, so where are we? So we're in the editor client source. What have I got changes? What have I got changes going on? Oh, no, that's fine. Um, so editor client source tours, welcome tour. So this is the, this is the welcome tour. This is what, um, uh, runs and defines all the different steps of what it shows. And here we can see um, link cool node added. I think this is the first time we try and point to something in the palette. Yep, it is. So this step, it has a prepare, it has a prepare step. So this gets run before it shows the step. So, that, so we've actually got an opportunity here to do some work to um, prepare the editor, get get it in the right state for this step to work. And what we want to do is, um, I think, hmm, there must be, I say there must be, I don't know actually, is there an API call? So we've got an action called toggle palette, and that's, that what well, does what it does. It toggles the palette's visibility. The problem is, the problem with the toggle is, if you want it in a well-defined state, you can't just call toggle, because um, uh, it will flip whatever state it's in. And if you want it in a given state, that it probably isn't going to help. So let's just go find where is toggle palette defined. Here we are. So Red Dot Actions, um, so this is where we define the toggle palette action. And in fact, you can see it does, the action does take an argument. So whilst not via the keyboard, but if you invoke this action, you can pass it a desired state. So down here, if I were to run red.actions.invoke core toggle palette, and pass a true in, it shows the palette. And if the palette's hidden and I invoke it with true, it stays hidden, um, sorry, it, it, it gets displayed. So that's cool. We can use that um, in our tour guide. We can stick in a red directions.invoke toggle palette. Um, so let's see, let's see what that does. So let's hide the palette because that's the state we want to be in. Uh, we're going to reset the tour guide. Um, yeah, I'm just going to run it. There, There is a way to run the tour without reloading, but we'll just do that. So I've got to click through it. It was step 10 was the broken one. Eight, nine. Cool. So link course, so that's worked. It's displayed. It's 
scrolled the link call into view and it's pointed at it. Awesome. Now, a problem though is it's left the palette open. And that's a problem because if a user prefers to have the palette hidden, they may not appreciate the tour guide revealing the palette and then leaving it open. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, um, we want to, what are we going to do? We are going to um, remember what state it's in. Now, at the moment, we don't have a clean API for that. So I'm, I'm in the interest of time, I'm going to slightly hack this in. Um, but what we can do is we can test, does Red, Red UI main container have the class Red UI palette closed? So it would be neater to have a proper API for this, but if I just show you what that evaluates to, so I'm, I'm yeah, does main container have palette closed? False, if I hide the palette and rerun it, we get true. So we can test it's, um, is it open or not? And then this is one of the neat things we can do with the tour guide. Um, we can actually use, we can set some state that gets remembered through a variety of steps. So this dot palette was open We're going to remember that. Okay. And then because we do something with the palette there, we then do something with the palette here. What we want to do is add a complete function. So once we've done telling you about the file nodes renamed step, um, we can do if this dot palette was open. In fact, I want to palette was closed. I kind of wonder. Yeah, if palette was closed, then we can reinvoke um, toggle palette, but this time with false because we want it to close. Um, in fact, we don't need to make it async and that should do it. Yep. Um, so we just reset the tour, we reload. So the palette is closed. Let's work our way through to step 10. Yep, so it's shown, shown, and then next. And it's worked, it's hidden the palette and it's moved on and everything's pointed at the right place. Um, cool. Whilst we're here, uh, I'm going to actually add an extra step. So, and I'm going to mm, add it in between. So we'll do the link call node first. Then we're going to do, um, then, and this is something I forgot to add to the tour that was in the second beta. Um, might be too long, but MQT nodes support dynamic connections. Um, so we know the palette will already be open and we want to go and point at, let's say we want to point at MQT out. And then the element we want to, the element we actually want to highlight is the MQT out node to the right. And then we can add a quick description and you'll notice the tour guide, it's got the ENUS stuff in. So this can all be localized. It can all be, the tour can have, be translated into different languages, um, in theory. <laughs> uh, we don't yet have anything translated, but it, that should all work. Um, so the empty nodes, um, now I've got to actually come up with some the MQT nodes now support creating their connections and subscriptions dynamically. 
rather than do you do British English? Um, technically, our default locale is ENUS, US English. I am sure the word colour, <laughs> I'm sure there are some British spellings in our ENUS message catalogue because, hey, I write them and um, I'm sure I've I've made, put some British spellings throughout. Um, now support creating the collection rather than hard code. Do we want to say rather than? No, maybe we'll just say less is more and all that. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. We set the tour. I'm going. I'm going to show the palette. Just want to make sure it stays open. Um, so tour guide, range of nodes. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, link call node, the empty nodes support dynamic connections, the empty nodes now support creating their connections and subscriptions dynamically. Uh, file nodes renamed, deep copy, yeah, that's all working. Awesome. Right, that's issue number one done. Um, Fix hide show of palette in tour and add empty nodes to welcome tour. Oh, and then I'll do. We are going to rattle through them tonight, guys. I'll tell you that. So, um, And I'm, I'm going to keep it in this one branch. I'm not going to create separate branches for all these fixes. Just we're going to wrap all these up in one pull request. Um, I will say that's something, if you follow our change logs closely, something I've done far more rigorously this go round is trying to make sure pretty much everything is a pull request, unless it's chores or minor little things. But I am trying to get much better at not abusing my ability to push directly to the git repo and do everything via a pull request um which is I've, when it comes to doing the change log i actually appreciate having a pull request to point at which can contain more information so what are we doing next um let's do the safari cosmetic thing um so let's just reload there let's go find safari Um, oops, oh, I do not like Right, so the issue with Safari, let's go find a change node. Here we go, change node. Here we are. The, um, let's switch to Chrome so you can, we can do a side by side. So in Chrome, this new deep copy value option, um, looks nice. In Safari, if I can find it, for whatever reason, Safari uh, is not looking nice. It's crushed the um, input. So let's go and work out what's gone on here. The input has got a width of auto, and is it the width of auto that has upset it? Um, is it the margin that's upset it? No. Okay, what is Safari doing with the width of... Yeah, width of naught. Why does that come from then? Okay, maybe rather than width of auto, if I were to set it to 30, no. Okay, let's do a display in line. I mean, why is this one broken and none of the others? Okay. Hmm. 
What are you doing, Safari, to give that checkbox zero width? I mean, it's we've got checkboxes elsewhere, which are just fine. So what's going on with this one? So it's got a inline block width 15, actually hard coded on it. So um, yeah, the input and set width 15 display inline block. No, okay, display block. No. Is this because I've got display flex? Yeah, okay, so this is the parent is set to display flex. So Safari is doing. Yeah, so the late. You're right. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right, Tyth, in the in the chat there. It's um the difference being the elements inside a display flex. <sighs> um Okay, just out of quick curiosity. Um Safari display flex input I don't know. Hmm. Now I was pretty certain. Yeah, so WebKit Flex doesn't fix it. Good. We don't need to do browser specific. Um, uh, well, we we do wrap the checkbox inside it labels elsewhere without any problem. Um, maybe we shouldn't use Safari well, you know, we've kind of, we've only recently dropped support for Internet Explorer, so I think, I mean, I'm, there's no reason it shouldn't work in Safari, um, but let's have a look. All right, I'm just going to refresh just to reset all the hand-edited styles I have in there. Um, let's have a look. If we set this to display block, no, we turn off flex, turn off block. Yeah, see, if it's not flex, it all looks good. But the reason I've got flex enabled is to get the vertical line working. Let's just go and back on. This is back on Chrome. If we turn off flex. Yeah, I mean, it's, flex isn't doing a lot for us in this instance. So Yeah, to be honest, rather than try and fight the random behavior of um, Safari, we can actually just much be much quicker. Oh, you'll like this as well. Uh, for us, the reason Atom has stopped syntax highlighting my node red HTML files unless I set it to Java server pages. <laughs> Uh, anyway, do many people still use Atom? Has everyone moved to VS Code these days? Um, here we are. So we can just get rid of the flex on that one. And that's restarted in the background just fine. And they look all right. There's a bit of vertical alignment that has my eye twitching, but yeah, 
and that looks better there as well. Okay, we're gonna live with that. Just kill Safari. I think my main problem, Steve, as with all editors, with all tools you use, you just get so used to particular tools and their quirks. Um, and yeah, I just haven't felt so compared. I've, I've fired up VS Code a couple of times. It's never quite stuck. Um, so let me just deep copy check box spacing on Safari. Yeah, it's never quite stuck in. Yeah, never quite stuck, so I don't know. Okay, so that's two of the issues. So those were the two issues I planned doing. But like I said, as we've been talking, someone has just posted something to the forum. Again, the change node. Um, so yeah, we're going to investigate this one in real time together. Let's pull it up. So JBud has identified. So here's a change node. Um, and if you can read the matrix, you can read the JSON and see it's got two rules. And this second rule is setting to the value. Um, false boolean. Um, if we look down at two screenshots, so here we have 206 when it's imported. You can see you import that flow, you get false boolean. If you import it to the beta, you get a true, which isn't so good. So let's see if we can reproduce that. So let's copy that um, JSON. Go get ourselves I'll just stick it in here. Import. Oh. Right, copy the JSON. Import. So let's first have looked at it in the inspector down here. It's got two rules. Um, first rule is two true of type blue lean and the second rule is uh, to false. Okay, so it's imported correctly. And when we open it up, sure enough, this second one is true, not false. Well, that's curious. We're also getting a, a rogue tooltip. Now, out of interest, if I set that to false and hit done, and then go have a look again at the node properties, you can see it's still false and boolean, and if I open it up, yeah, okay, so something's definitely wrong. Something is definitely wrong with that change node. Um, right. thinking how best to track that down. Okay, we are, I'm gonna import it again. I'm gonna get rid, I'm, I'm gonna, it's got two rules. For the sake of argument, I'm gonna change the first one to be, yeah, I'm just gonna have one rule rather than the two and import that. And yeah, so, definite an issue in general. So something else I want to look at here is, at the moment it's a change rule. If we set, do a set boolean true and set boolean false. Let's 
hit deploy to save this. So yeah, and they're both true. Okay, is this have I introduced a bug with um in the typed basically what we're trying to do here is track down is this a bug in the change node or is it more generally in the um typed input? Oops. So let's go look at a different node. Inject or input. Um, and let's inject a boolean of false up here. Now when we open this, yeah, it's flipped back to true. Okay, so we're looking at a bug in the typed input, not specifically the change node. Yeah, this was potentially quite a nasty one. Okay, so this is typed input. Um, and I'm sure I've shown you before. So we've got documentation for the typed input in the website, which means the website repo has got a copy of this file as well. The number of times I've started editing the website copy and then not understood why Node-RED hasn't picked up these changes because I've edited the wrong version. So all of the all of the UI widgets that are in the website repository, copies in the website repository, have got a big cow at the top of them so that a, a very obvious eye catcher so I know if I've opened the wrong file. Anyway, here we are in the right file um, and boolean. Okay, so here's the definition of boolean. Um, it has a value of bool that's its type and the label and an icon. We don't care about label and icon here. And it has options, true or false. Um, yeah. So I did make some, some uh, yeah. Changes have been made to this code. So Um, I'm just trying to think the best way to debug this now. What we need to do is, because you've got two different things to set. You've got to set the type of the field and its value. Um, what we're going to do is start here. Uh, typed input dot value. Stick it there because always the easiest spot, and then right. So that's just going to be some very obvious debug whenever I open up. Okay, except I've got lots going on. Why have I got quite so many going on? Let's get rid of payload, we just want to have the one. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Okay, so we've got lots going on. We've got, you can see we set type undefined, type message, type undefined, type string value, topic value, true, type boolean, value true. Um, okay, I'm confused. Let's just have a look. What is this node configured with? Okay, it's configured with true. <laughs> we don't want that. We want to configure it with false. Let's just check that has actually changed. Yeah, that's false. So I'm going to deploy that so it's it's definitely false in the node. So now when we open it, um, because there's this message.topic typed input, some of this debug is for the wrong thing. Um, and I think you can pretty much ignore that first one. But then we come down here where it sets, not well, sets. you can ignore saying value to topic, that's the other one. So here we go. We set the value to false, which is, the value it should have. 
it then sets the type to boolean and then something is explicitly setting its value back to true. Um, yeah. So I'm actually going to change So um, what I'm going to do is kind of change this. I've lost it now. So we want to see who is. I'm going to change that to a console.warn. Doing that so that we can actually get a stack trace of who is. who's calling. setting the value to true. Um, then. Yeah. Let's let's uh, how do we get rid of that spam comment in the chat? I've got the Twitch I've struggled with this before. I don't get enough spam to have actually worked it out, but um I'm in the stream manager on the Twitch webpage. I can click on that and there's curiously absolutely no option here for me to say, go away, your spam. Can I do it on this window? Hmm. Can I? Oh, here we are. Ban them. There, they've been banned. Hasn't deleted the message, but... Oh, no, there, the message has been deleted. We got there. <laughs> um, I mean, it'd be nice to be able to delete comments without having to ban the user, but anyway, let's carry on. Um, so something is called set the value to true. And if we just look through down the stack trace here, so the value is the function that has set it. Here you can see it's in a call to setting the type. So it's, um, okay, let me, let me just find this in, in the editor to, so here we are in, um, where we, we've called to set the type. So again, just going back to the sequence of events, um, We've set the value to false. We've then set the type to boolean. Um, and I think it's crucial that because the events have happened in that order, when we set the type to boolean, there is code in here that... Right, so I'll just work through this. Right, it has to do a whole bunch of stuff whenever you change the type. Um, it does some work to remember what, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter what it does. It does stuff. It then works out, does it need to change the icon because you've changed the type? It then works out, does the new type have options, which the Boolean does, true and false. Um, it then builds the UI for the, the selector for, for that. Um, then... It says opt, if not opt has a value. Now I'm just gonna, I know this is the doc version, I'm just. Okay, yeah, so opt has value. That means oh, it's we, we're inside this if block. What it then tries to do is it looks at all the options for this type and tries to decide is the current value valid and what we are seeing is we are getting down to here, sorry, getting down to here, where we've decided the current value is not valid, so we reset it back to the first in the list, option zero. So that's, that's what we're seeing happen. We're seeing it then call value with true, because true is the first value in the list. So for some reason, it's decided it is, it's, not, it's not come to the conclusion that this is a valid value. 
Okay, so let's just instrument this so we can see what the logic is doing. Um, we can say current value, we know that. In fact, do it this way because it looks better. We know the current value. Um, and we're going to look at the available options. I can't do it like that. I have to do it like that. Right, so let's have a look. So here we come down. We have set the value to false. We've then set type to bool. And. Um, oh. Okay, my psi is, I, I understand. Um, yeah, other people in the, <laughs> you know what I'm gonna say. Um, currently debugging this live on Twitch. Let's see if there's, let's get some more viewers. Um, okay. So the pro, uh, I've set the value to false. I've then set the type to Boolean. And then when we're coming to check, is the current value valid or not? Current value has been reset back to an empty string. Why is that? That's because of some changes we made. I, we, collective we, as in me, this block of code here. What this block of code is doing is it's trying to do the right thing when you change types in the typed input by remembering what you had previously entered for a given type. So um, if you, well, in this instance, if you've got a Boolean true or false, and then you switch it to string, probably you don't want the word true or false in the string, so it blanks it out. But it remembers for the type Boolean, you had, say, false selected. So if you then switch back to Boolean, it looks up what did you previously have selected and then um, sets it back, restores to the previous value. Um, and this logic only kicks in if the value if the type has already been changed once because if it hasn't been changed yet then we're kind of in this initialized state so there's nothing to restore so what is curious is what's going on for it to think why is it thinking we haven't yet initialized its value Um, so out of interest, I'm just going to go look at the inject node code. This is one of those things we can't, rel we need to try and make sure, sorry, we need to make sure the fix is sound in the node, in, in the typed input. We can't, this can't result in having to change how people use the typed input because obviously nodes just use them. Um, so in here, you have lots of typed inputs being set up. Here is, yeah, I think here's kind of the problem. We set up, so property value is the one we're looking at. We set up the typed input. And then we set its um, value and type down here. But because we've already set its 
we've set, told its default type should be string, it means it's being initialized as a string type. We then switch it, and as soon as we switch it, in fact, here you can see here is where we're setting the value, and then we're setting the type, and that's that is buggy. If we did it the other way around, type then value, I think this will now work. Yeah, see, false, because um, it's changed the type to boolean and it's defaulted back to true, but then we set the value explicitly to false. So by doing them in the right order, you have to set the type first, then the value. We actually fix the issue. Um, so, yeah, it's, I mean, semantically, that's arguably entirely the correct thing to do. If you want to change both the type and value, you should do it in that order. And in fact, you can do it even better by um, when you initialize the typed input. Well, there's no point to then set the default type later. You may as well, as we already know it, set the default type up front. So if we just look at, so in here you can see typed input dot type undefined message undefined string. Okay, it's doubling and then sorry undefined message undefined string, then type boolean. Yes, that's because we've got more than one typed input here. But just by making that change, undefined message undefined bool. But crucially, we've not got that setting the type to string in there because there's no point setting its type to. Um, to the string when we know we're going to instantly change it. Okay. So if we go and look in um, in the change node, here we have, it's a bit more complicated. Um, just here you can see we're because the way we dynamically create the fields, we've got these built-in functions that can create the typed input. If you've watched, I think two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I did some work refactoring some of this. Um, um, so let's see. Yeah, Sean, so keeping the values, if it should keep the value, if it's um, basically there are three, let me remind myself. Yeah, th th there are three cases. There's the case where it has an input where you type something in and it will always, it remembers that value as you change round. There are then ones where you have a select list and it will remember that value and then you have the ones which have no options at all and it remembers that so um yeah so yes it it, it won't blank out the value switching between json and jsonata because they are of the same they both have an input field that, that you type into so yeah this is to us this is trying to handle the case where you've got a multiple select list and it's a pain if you select lots of items, you then change the type by mistake, say, and then go back and it's forgotten everything you'd selected. Yeah, that that is what that we've resolved. But what I want to do here is, so in the inject node, having said, actually, it makes far more sense to set the default type to the type we know we want it to be. I think we can actually do a very similar thing in the inject node. Because here we have all these utility functions that create the um, typed inputs. And they're all defaulting to the string type. And there will be some code later on that is, um, yeah, sorry, I'm failing to talk. I just want to concentrate on this for a sec. So let's do, this is the two value, I think create two values, is that right?
Yeah. So two value typed input. Um, well, Sharon, it, it, it's trying to get the balance. I mean, it, yeah. Um, let's say, trouble is there's, there's, <laughs> There's always counter examples of times when it would be nice. Now, what's interesting here, you can see all of these are setting their value, then setting their type. Um, which is going to be a problem for anything with a um, multiple select. The problem is, I don't think the typed input can do we can't tell internally. We could tell when it was being set up initially because no one had called type yet. So I'm worried now this is actually going to, we can fix this in our nodes, but I'm worried this is going to introduce bugs in third party nodes who maybe have copied our code. And if they copy them to do these this way round, setting, changing the value, then the type, they're going to be stuffed when it comes to booleans. Yeah, okay. Um, that's a bit of a pain. I'd like to be able to fix this wholly within typed input so it doesn't... Um, isn't it plain wrong? As in, what, setting the value and then setting the type? Is that what you mean, Dice Twitch? Um, I mean, yes, semantically it is wrong, um, but as the code has done this for a very long time, um, it's it's hard. It's it's tricky to make a change and say, oh, by the way, this is going to break. This could break nodes, and while semantically. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to do value then type. It makes much more sense to do the type and then value. Um, uh, yeah. Um, but what we're going to do, I'm conscious of time. Um, at the moment, I want to. What do I want to do? Right, with that. So, this is the code where it's actually building the UI for the first time rather than it being changed dynamically. What we're going to do, because I want to sort of minimize, it, it is an optimization, as I showed on the inject node, if we can set the default type to be the desired type straight away. So we've got these utility functions, create property value, create move value, create from value, create to value, that currently just create the typed input um, with a default type. What we can actually optimize here is if we pass in to each of these um, f 
fact, just to simplify the code, we can get rid of that if statement because we know it won't exist at that point in time. And we're going to pass in as a third argument the type. So property value is now going to take a third argument, which is default type. And we will use that here. But if it's not been provided, we'll fall back to string, which we do still need to be able to do. So if we reload and have a look, um, which was it? One of these, wasn't it? Yeah, see, that's fixed it now because, because we're setting the type straight away. We're not f toggling the type. It's working, which is nice. Um, Let's go do that for these other fields. So from value, let's go have a look where that gets used. So here's where it's first set up. And we're going to pass in the default type there. And again, two value won't exist, uh, can't exist yet. So I'm just, I'm moving these if guards. I mean, they, yeah, I'm removing those if guards because we're in the code path where we're just setting up the UI for the first time. So yeah, nothing's going to have dynamically created it yet. So create from value now has a default type, which we will apply there. But again, default string, in fact, default type, just got to follow the same pattern through them all now. Create to value, not that one. This one, okay, and move, Oop. create move value, we'll take, set its default type as well. Is that all the utility functions? Yes, that's all the utility functions. True and false. Um, it feels I ought to. Let's just make sure all of these get set properly. Yeah. Yeah, this is all doing the right thing. Move flow. Yeah. So that's all behaving. All those all those values are now behaving. So yeah. I think I need to just mull over the fact this change isn't entirely self-contained in typed input. It is arguably a change in behavior, albeit a more correct behavior than this could, could be troublesome. One thing we can do, one thing I want to go and have a look at 
is um, let's go have a look at all of our nodes. I'm going to go have a look at all of our nodes in their HTML files. And we want um, to have a look to see who changes the type of their typed input. Hmm. Ah, I haven't got regex matching one. Okay, let's collapse all those. It's not that many, just 10 nodes. So inject node we've looked at. Um, debug node. What's this doing? If this is on edit prepare. So I'm now just looking for, yeah, so here is another anti-pattern of we set the value before we might change the type. Look in the function node. Okay, function node doesn't change the type. Switch node does change the type. And again, here, look, you can see we set the value, then we set the type. So let's have a look at. So is the switch node broken as well? Uh, oh, a newish cache software and game development manual. Okay, that's good to know. Thanks for sharing that in the chat. For a long time, there wasn't anything quite suitable other than technology or something. So yeah, I'll take a look at that. Thanks for sharing. Um, so yeah, is have we got another lurking bug here? Or is it not a bug because you can't actually select Boolean in any of these? Because if you want to do true or false, um, Yeah, so we might be getting away with it in the switch node. You're right, you know, the science and technology category in Twitch, it's kind of like, here's 101 categories if you're doing games and gaming, which is fine, that's what Twitch is about. You know, I don't know what the percentage, but you know, 90% of its, its um, streams and its revenue is gaming. And then they just sort of, Science and tech. Anything else that's not gaming, it's science and tech. But yeah, that is quite a broad category. So cool. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you very much. Um, so here we are in the change node. Well, we've we've fixed that up. So we'll skip over that for now. MQTT node. Basically, I'm looking at the function signature. So all of these, it's calling typed input the type function of typed input without another argument, which means it's querying it rather than setting it. I'm looking for where we set it. So here we have the HV input node where it does do some setting. Um, oh, I wish the syntax highlighting would behave. Um, 
so here we at least we set the type then the value which is goodness here we set the type that's okay here we set the type and then the value which is good that's the right way around type and value yeah okay so HP input node I'm pretty certain is healthy split node um, we set the types I <laughs> used no dread flows to win game giveaways on Twitch streams. Very nice. Um, so the sort node just queries it. Batch node. Oh, it does set. Yeah, so the value field sets. Value field does set the value, then the type. Ah, but it sets the type to string which is probably going to be all right. The value field. Yeah, in fact, that's a complete waste of time. It has only has one type, so there's absolutely no point setting. I'm, I'm not going to muck around with, but that is a big fat waste of time, that line of code. OK. Um, so debug node. I want to have another look at because typed input typed status. Let's have a look. What, what's it getting at? It's going to be node status, same as debug output, message dot blah, or an expression. Um, yeah, okay, so. Again, I, the problem only comes about if one of your valid options is, say, Boolean or something with an option list. Um, so, yeah. I think I need to think about this a bit more. I need, want to think about, is there a way we can still have this type checking Um, because I've fixed it now. I mean, I've, I've fixed it in the nodes themselves. I've fixed it in the change node. I've fixed it in the in the inject node by making sure we set the type before we set the value. Um. Yeah. I need to have a mull over on that. Suddenly we have fixed the immediate behavior and that's probably worth committing. Well, no, it, it is worth committing full stop. Um, let me just check, I haven't, yep. Of course I have left some Debugging. Um, so let's just review exactly what change I made in the inject node. So in the inject node, rather than set the value than the type, I initialize the input with the right type. So we don't have to set it. The other fix would have been just to swap those two lines around. So we set the type, then the value, but that would be a big fat waste. In the change node, it's a bit more involved. But when I create the different typed inputs, the different types for the different inputs, we set their default type up front if we know it. Um, yeah, and simplified that code somewhat. In fact, I would just like to, um, sorry, change node. We don't get any issues swapping around between all these different types. No, I think we're all good. So Boolean false there. If I change that to delete and then go back to set, 
it's still boolean false because that's all goodness all right yeah um uh to da, 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 fix um inject change node restoring <sighs> typed input options all right we're going i'm going to push this i won't I'm not going to merge it right now um but we will push it Go create the PR and then I'm going to log off because it's been coming up on the 90 minute mark. So we stick this into dev branch. Bug fix. Fix issues. Um, right. Uh, tour guide. Um, what have we done? We've done the tour guide. Uh, your palette is visible before show, before highlighting palette nodes. Tour guide add MQT node step to oh, I can't type step to welcome tour. We uh, fixed change node CSS styling in Safari. Cheers, Jim Bob. Scorchy, thanks, Ball Geek. Geek, it's all always good to see you guys here. Um, like I said, almost certainly be streaming next Monday. Small chance I won't be. But I will update the schedule as soon as I know. So don't don't sit there waiting for me if if I don't appear. Um, then uh, fix restoring boolean types in inject change nodes. Oh my, what's gone on there? Right, there we go. That's the pull request in. I'm going to think a bit more about the typed input and, and that last change we've done. Um, at the very least, need to add some words to the documentation somewhere about this behavior. Um, yeah. As I say, my, my worry is users copy the core, well, no developers copy the core nodes as they're allegedly good examples. <laughs> and you know, quite often bugs can percolate into the ecosystem that way. But yeah, not much we can do. All right, I'm gonna call it there. Thank you everyone for joining as ever. Um, a pretty productive, um, pretty productive 90 minutes. Have a great week. Keep an eye out for the final release, all being well, on Thursday. Um, Node Red Con Tokyo is this coming Saturday from um, 1 p.m. Japan time, which is 5 a.m. British time. I'm doing the closing keynote at about 9.40 my time. So, um, yeah, 9.40 British summer time. Um, I'm hopefully going to wake up in time to watch all the talks the promise to be very good um yeah look forward to it otherwise have a great week and i'll catch you another time thanks all bye mm -hmm.